Hello and guten tag. Why guten tag, I hear you ask? Because Britain has been occupied. This is SSGB by Len Dayton. Before you switch off, the whole Nazis have won the war bit was a new idea at the time. This book is from 1978. So I appreciate it's become a bit of a cliche now to have the, oh, what if the Nazis had won? This was a new idea and it does hold up very well. So keep that in mind when we're looking through this. Basically, the story begins, it's a year since Operation Sea Lion succeeded. Nazi troops landed and occupied the majority of the UK. There's parts of Scotland that still aren't occupied in that classic, why bother invading Scotland, there's nothing worth stealing. And I say that as a Welshman, and Wales wasn't conquered fully by the Romans, because there was nothing worth stealing. So I can't really sort of judge for that. But that's where we start in this book. Uh, the King and Churchill have been captured, the princesses have been evacuated to New Zealand, and life is sort of going on, which is, I think, the interesting thing about this. There's a resistance, and there's a plan for what to do and all that, but mostly life is going on, and it's just a bit more grim and miserable. And that's the sort of thing you expect from your Len Dayton's. This is the first Len Dayton I've read, but it's quite like John le Carre in that respect. So... The story in short, uh, Detective Superintendent Douglas Archer is investigating murders exactly the same as he was before the war. It's just now he's working for German bosses instead of British bosses. And in his mind, I think he's trying to convince himself more than anything else, nothing has changed. I'm still a policeman doing my job. Unfortunately, a recent murder has drawn the attention of SS Standartenführer, I don't speak German, Huth who works for the larger SS organization in Germany, as opposed to the local SS general, which is General Kellerman, who Douglas has a good working relationship with. Uh, this new man is a bit of a wild card. He's a bit more what you would be afraid of if you were told you were working for an SS officer, rather than the slightly bumbling General Kellerman that he's used to. As if to make matters worth, worth, worse, uh, Douglas Archer has become involved accidentally in the resistance and has to sort of reconcile trying to keep his friends who are in the resistance out of trouble and trying to still solve murders which is his job and reconcile all this with his own sense of patriotism and this and that and the other so it, it's an interesting book uh, has its pros and cons as they all do and we're going to start with the cons as I always do there are some questions I'm just waving the book around there are some questions that go unanswered, uh, which is pr possibly deliberate. I appreciate that. But something that annoys me as someone who likes his history is why did Sea Lion succeed? You know, how were they able to conquer Britain? Because it's been through so many uh, simulations and recreations, and it's been analysed within an inch of its life. We're pretty sure Sea Lion could never have worked. The, the idea of Nazi occupation of Britain is next to impossible. So it'd be interesting to see, well, how did he make it possible? You know, what, what went differently? I would have liked to have seen just a little bit of that. Just a little bit of chat about how that had worked. The other, it's the only other major thing that annoys me, is that there's a death, I won't give spoilers, but there's a death near the end of the book, which again is completely unanswered. There's no reason for it. It just seems that it was put in there as a, this will make everyone feel a bit worse. There wasn't a purpose to it. We don't even really know how it happened. It's just like, oh, yeah, he's dead now. Oh, okay. So, it felt a bit needless. But as cons go, that's more or less it. There's a one of my could-be-pro, could-be-con bits, which is it's interesting, but it's interesting to me. I don't know how interesting it would be to most people. They have that rivalry between the SS and the Wehrmacht and the sort of political back and forth that goes forth around between those. Most people don't know about that, especially people in 1978 wouldn't realize that the Nazi war machine is not a single cohesive force. There is a big difference between SS and Wehrmacht, the regular army. And I like that, the way that comes across in this book. But most people might think that's a little bit too into it, that's a little bit too confusing. 
maybe it wasn't needed. I like to think it made something good out of the book, but again, pro and con, depending on your point of view. So on to the pros. Very interesting concept, and it was an interesting concept back when ideas like this were unique. I know now we have things like Man in the High Tower, and there's hundreds and hundreds of books of here's Hitler standing in the Houses of Parliament, here's Hitler standing in front of St. Paul's Cathedral. Oh look, the Nazis have won, what a dreadful, dreadful world we live in. This was new, and it was realistic, the way they've portrayed it. It's a lot about sort of day-to-day -day life and life going on, and you just trying to keep going, not thinking, well, how do we get rid of these dreadful Germans? Because they're just people running the country, and everything's a little bit worse, everything's a little bit more grim. But most people aren't desperately reaching for arms to fight off the dreaded invader, because, well, why would you? They've won. We, we don't have an army to fight them with anymore. We might as well make the best of things. It's not a particularly upbeat idea, but it works. I liked it. It's like Archer is theoretically a collaborator, because he's collaborating with the German army, and he's working for them. He speaks German. He's all this, but you don't hate him for it. You just think, no, you're a policeman trying to do your job. Your bosses have changed. That's all. That's not all, obviously. The situation is very different, but you can sympathize with him for trying to convince himself that's not the case. That's, let's see. I wrote down a little realistic portrayal, and I thought, well, that's what I've just said, so I'm not going to repeat myself. It's uh, no extreme heroism and no extreme dystopia either. This is sort of Len Dayton, there are no heroes. Right. Can round this up nicely. I enjoy this. Uh, this is the first Land Dayton I've read, but I've read a fair bit of John Le Carre, and it's got a similar feel to it. This is there's no Ian Fleming going on in this. There's no swinging from rafters or anything. This is no really. What would have happened if this and that and the other? And I liked that. It wasn't adventurous, and it was dare I say it, not as fun as really a James Bond book, but it was absorbing, and it was a page turn. It. I was surprised how much I wanted to keep going back to read it. Not so I could get it done, but to find out what happened next and how the characters were doing. So, yes, I'm, tr I'm trying to keep my videos short, so I'm going to leave it at this. SSGB, I'm in no great rush to reread it, but I'm very glad that I did read it and I would recommend it to other people. So, this is James, a.k.a. J.P. Harker, signing off once again. Auf Wiedersehen.